Early voting turnout in Georgia broke records. As you heard from Bill, 1.8 million people cast their ballots prior to today. Democrats, obviously, generally benefit from early voting turnout. Republicans usually show up day of. But after the GOP's mediocre midterm performance, is it time for Republicans to step up their early voting game? Joining me now to discuss is our party panel, New York Post columnist and spectator contributor Carol Markowitz, Fox News senior political analyst Juan Williams, and 2020 Libertarian vice presidential candidate and chair of YouAreThePower.net, Spike Cohen. Carol, I'll go to you first. Uh, what, how do you feel about Republican performance in this kind of post-election period uh, for the runoff? You know, I feel poorly about Republican performance. Uh, they completely misplayed Georgia, and it's been so annoying to watch. You know, a few weeks ago, Chuck Schumer said he wants to legalize everyone who is in the U.S. illegally. Where were the ads to say that Warnock would be a vote for this? Where were the What were the issues that Walker stood for? You know, Republicans are confusing opposition to Trump with being a moderate. Kemp is not a success because he's a moderate. He's actually very conservative. So you run a conservative campaign in Georgia, and you win. You run a person personality-based campaign in Georgia, and you better hope your personality is up for the job. Yeah. And uh, Spike, I think some people were a little angry at libertarians because they got 2 percent of the vote in the first thing. They're not going to have libertarians to complain about in the runoff, are they? Exactly. And the thing is, if you uh, don't win a race or don't win it outright because, uh, eight, in this case, 81,000 voters voted for a candidate that they knew wasn't going to win because they were just so uh, upset and frustrated uh, with the other options available to them, that's not our fault. That's your fault for running that kind of a candidate. This should have been a walkaway win for, uh, for, Georgia, for Georgia, for the Republicans in Georgia. Georgia is a red state. I live in South Carolina, which is equally a red state. They ran a bad candidate and they're suffering for it. And I'm, I am convinced they've learned nothing from it. And the proof of it is Chase Oliver, who was the libertarian candidate, offered both Warnock and Walker to meet with him uh, to talk about what their vision was with the idea that he might actually support one of them if they did. Neither one of them did. That would have been crucial for Walker to do, uh, for his campaign to do. They didn't do it. And I I'm convinced they haven't learned their lesson. They're, you know, the, the, the unnecessary losses for the Republican Party are going to continue until morale improves. And uh, I just think that's what's going to happen. They will never learn. Uh, one, uh, the Democrats obviously do better in this early voting thing. Republicans now have this conversation. They say we've got to get into that game. But it's long been assumed Democrats have the advantage in this early voting game. Republicans are never going to be able to catch them. Do you think Republicans can do that, can do the old-fashioned ballot harvesting door-to-door, -door, give me your ballot, I'll take it in for you? Can they do it? Well, yeah, I don't know that ballot harvesting, that sounds a little sketchy to me, but I think in terms of people standing in line, and we saw that in Georgia for a long time, big lines in that early vote, and turnouts everything in midterm elections, and especially in a special election like we're having tonight, that's so critical. And by the way, it's a lot of young people uh, who turn out in the early, uh, you know, when they have the er early opportunity to go to the polls. So, you know, it's the difference is when you look at the older population, they're the ones that tend to vote on Election Day. And that's why people are saying that today will be good for Republicans in terms of today's turnout. But the question is whether or not it's sufficient to pr prominence of young voters that, that was on display uh, and much of it apparently going to the Democrat Raphael Warnock. So you go that way and you also have to consider, Tom, you mentioned in the open the difference between President Trump and President Biden and the fact is it an unpopularity contest. But, you know, remember, Trump has discouraged uh, people from believing in elections and in some cases from voting. It might be why you have a Senator Warnock as an incumbent right now. Yeah. Carol, uh, one didn't like the term uh, uh, ballot harvesting, but that's what's happening. I mean, <laughs> mail-in voting is ballot harvesting Absolutely. because Democrats yeah. admit they go door to door, they have a sack like Santa Claus, right. and they say, give me your vote. Yes. They stuff it in a sack yep. and they yep. bring it down to the local precinct. So can Republicans do that? Yeah. 
Well, Republicans would, would be absolute fools not to do that. So, of course, they may not do that. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think it's absolutely the next <laughs> frontier here. I, I don't think that there's any shot of going back to not doing this. The Democrats are ab you know, definitely ballot harvesting across the country. And Republicans have to either overturn the rules that allow that or they have to do it themselves. And I would suggest perhaps doing it themselves um, in lieu of uh, trying to overturn these laws all across the country. Yeah, very quickly, Spike, the Republicans and Democrats, they fail on COVID, as far as I'm concerned, in, in terms of liberty. Uh, have you seen anyone turning to the Republican Party because of because both parties really whiffed on COVID? That was the biggest source. Of, I think you meant the Libertarian Party. That was the source, uh, probably the single biggest source of growth in the Libertarian Party over the last two years was that we were the only party that was consistently against the COVID regimes from the beginning. My first anti-lockdown video was in February of 20 or March of 2020. Uh, March of 2020, before the lockdowns even got here, and I wasn't the only libertarian doing that. Uh, and, it, you know, we were consistent from day one when Trump was attacking governors who weren't locking down as much as he wanted them to and blasting Sweden for not locking down. We were consistent in saying we were yeah. against all of it. We were against any new mandates that were going to come down the pike. We were always against that. And that, yes, that was the, probably the single biggest source of growth uh, for the Libertarian Party was that we were consistently against the COVID regime, as we are against any draconian measures. Yeah, well, we're going to be talking.